What's going on folks, Ted from Nerd Immersion here, and we're gonna talk about this really crazy epic 50th anniversary set of miniatures that the folks at WizKids have created for the 50th anniversary of Dungeons and Dragons. Now, I don't have any of the product in hand and I don't believe anybody does. They might've shown some off to IGN, I think. Um, they said there are 25 classic creatures and characters in this set shown from their version in first edition all the way through fifth edition for a total of 50 miniatures. So like you might get a first edition beholder and then a fifth edition beholder. Uh, it says also for the first time, they're including an additional 10 secret rare miniatures to collect as well. Now, this, I mean, they're already loot boxy, right? That's the nature of these miniature boxes but now they're including secret rares in <laughs> secret rares within the box. So I don't have, like I said, product in hand. However, WizKids did send me a ton of files via Dropbox kind of detailing everything. So I think we're just going to go and review those. So let's take a look. So here is the 50th anniversary eight count booster brick and classic red dragon box miniature info. All right, so that's kind of what we just talked about. So here we can see set list not including the secret rare chase mini. So we are we might not even know what they are. They might have sent me images. If I did, they did. Spoiler alert. If not, I guess we'll have to find out, which I will tell you from a content creation perspective, making an unboxing video is that much more interesting if there's 10 minis that nobody knows what's in it. But I'll also be honest with you. I used to review like all of these ahead of time to see what's in it and be like, oh, I hope I get this. Now I don't. And I just wait for the minis to show up and unbox them because it's more exciting to not know what's coming and then find it. So we've got, uh, well, that says lemur. I'm wondering if that's supposed to have an E at the end and be like Lemur, the, the like little flesh blob fiend creature. Bugbear, goblin, kobold, blink dog, knoll, dwarf, elf, Shadow Demon, Mimic, Skeletal Knight, Githyanki, Glabrazu, Kieran, Green Slod, Pit Fiend, Flail Snail, Mordenkainen himself, along with Strahd von Zorovich, uh, Lolth, a Sererak, Vecna, an Eidolon, a Gold Dragon, and an Afridi. So it goes on to say they are 50 high quality miniatures. Each contains one large miniature and three medium or small miniatures. They're going to retail for $24.99 for the booster uh, box, the individual box with four minis. A brick, this might be the most expensive brick we've seen so far, $200 for the brick. It says it'll be available in local game stores in July. Uh, then there is the, um, the, the like, premium figure, if you will, which is a classic red dragon. So it says, a fiery peril to adventurers of editions new and old, the Red Dragon has remained a mainstay of fantasy villainy. Celebrate this classic D&D threat with our new D&D icons of the realms, 50th anniversary classic Red Dragon boxed miniature. The set includes a Red Dragon as depicted on the iconic cover of the 1977 Dungeons & Dragons base set. It is large size on a 75mm base. Um... And again, it is $29.99, also set to release in July. All right, let's go back and see what... I think this is just these images. This is just... Oh, okay. There's actually... There's fun facts? Okay, here is the FAQ. Nothing crazy. Stay tuned for more information on the secret rares. All right. Uh, fun facts. Let's look at the fun facts. This is the first time seeing uh, some of the first edition monsters as minis and in color, right? Because all the original books are black and white. The Githyanki 1E sculpt is based on the front cover of the Fiend folio. Morning Kanan was Gygax's personal character who went on to become Gygax's most famous character and prominent character in many D&D worlds. One of the Morning Kanan's signature spells, Morning Kanan's Faithful Hound, can be seen being cast by the 5e mini okay so they're casting that spell 1e strahd mini is referencing strahd's prose from the cover of the first module and the 1e ravenloft module uh 5e strahd mini is referencing strahd's pose from the front cover of curse of strahd where he's kind of sitting in the chair very dracula castlevania style 
Spider Queen Lolth has many forms. Her 1E mini shows her drow form. Her 5E mini shows her spider form. 5E Aserak can be seen holding the Talisman of the Sphere, commanding the Sphere of Annihilation. 1E Vecna is referencing the cover art from Vecna Reborn. Both 1E and 5E Vecna will be Vecna's first appearance, first appearance as official pre-painted miniatures. I did not know Vecna's never had a mini before. The Eidolon is referencing the front cover of the uh, first edition handbook, player's handbook. First edition, young gold dragon is supposed to look like the D&D ampersand. It's very cool. And the 1E of Freedy is referencing the iconic cover art of the DMG. All right. So let's go back to the logo. Do we have a logo for this? Oh, we do. Okay, here we go. So get used to this, folks. We're going to see this a lot. This is the official 50th anniversary of Dungeons and Dragons logo. This is what Wizards of the Coast is using. This is 50 years of D&D. This is what it looks like. Is this 5-0 with a dragon as part of the 0? Then we've got just the WizKids logo. Not a big deal. We know what that is. All right. Packaging. Nothing in the packaging section. All right. Renders is what you really want. Let's start with a classic red dragon. This is what it looks like. Now, for those of you who are immediately like, that's kind of derpy looking. That's kind of the intention. This is the first edition Red Dragon, as on the front cover of the basic set. It kind of looks, this is actually a very close uh, comparison to that original, uh, original look. Let me see if I can pull that up over here. Um... Uh, let's see yeah there it is basic set so if you were to look that's what it looks like right there and that's the art we got so um all right now let's go and look at the brick miniatures okay we'll get the renders of all the actual miniatures themselves as you can see here so it was a Lemur, which is this guy. This is the fifth edition. Oops. This is the fifth edition render of that. That's what they look like in 5e. These are the lowest level uh, versions of these sort of fiendish monsters, right? They kind of went like the lowest level, right? So that was, this is their first edition art, which is actually kind of cute, if I'm being honest. This thing... Disgusting feels like it comes from Silent Hill. This thing is kind of cute and feels like it could be uh like I I I feel like there would have been a cartoon in the 80s about this guy. I'm like I probably would have watched it growing up. All right. We have the 5e bugbear. I'm loving this art with the horns and everything and this massive great axe. This is phenomenal. And then <laughs> the one e bugbear which is again him and the lemure could be in that 80s show that i was telling you about this cartoon that i made up um that it has these guys in it that'd be great all right here is the this is a very serious looking goblin here uh and then we have the one e goblin that's fine. It's It really doesn't look that much different, so I'm okay with that. It's just like a different stance, honestly. All right, we have the Cobalt. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar, this is probably going to be a pretty big shift for you as this Cobalt is very draconic in its design. And the 1E Cobalt was a lot more kind of dog-like in its design, as you can kind of see there from the face, though they did go out of their way to put scales and stuff on it to still make it more draconic. Not so much as, you know, I feel like it didn't look this draconic in 1E, but either way. All right, we have a Blink Dog. I love this with it coming out of the base like this. This is pretty cool. So here's your 5E um, Blink Dog. And here's your cute little 1E Blink Dog. He's cute. I like him. I'm digging the look. 
All right here is ooh, this knoll is nice. I'm loving this. I love knolls. If you don't know that about me, knolls are one of my favorite um favorite monsters in Dungeons and Dragons. So uh, the knoll is obviously I really really like this a lot. Uh, I like the red eyes. I just like the design. Although I probably would have gone with a different color for the chest armor and maybe the leg straps because it's a lot of gray. And I feel like Knowles traditionally are brown and hyena-esque. And while this does still kind of get you some hyena vibes, it gives me more wolf here with the gray. But that's just me. And I, I might like the 1E Knoll better, if I'm being honest with you. I think I might like it better. I like the face here. But this is more like werewolf to me than it is Knoll, in my opinion. All right, next up, we have the dwarf. I'm not really, I feel like he should be stouter, right? He's not really giving me dwarf vibes here. But all right, and then we have, actually, I don't know which one's which. Is this supposed to be the fur, the 1E e dwarf? The, I guess so. This is the 1E e dwarf. And this is the 5e, because she's in the one, like, she's in the player's handbook. It's weird that they switched to go from 1e being first, or 5e being first, and then switched it. So this is Elf. I think this is the first edition Elf. And this is the fifth edition Elf. This is giving me very, like, Tolkien vibes here which tracks with first edition Dungeons and Dragons. And this is giving me, you know, princess spellcaster, witch type. All right. Shadow demon. I'm liking this. It kind of gives me some venom vibes here. The one E shadow demon. And here's the five E shadow demon. Again, remember these are renders. So like, I don't know how much of this kind of translucent stuff you have coming off the wings will actually be present. I think I kind of like this one better. It's got the Spider-Man mask. I like it a little better than this guy. Uh, the Mimic. I mean, you can't... How can you... I mean, okay. Realistically, the new Mimic is just way better. In every way. But how can you not enjoy the Mimic that's just punching somebody in the face with its pseudopod, right? Like that... That is hilarious to me. This is obviously much more terrifying and just way cooler to look at in every possible way. The orange multiple eyes, the big long tongue, the sharp teeth. This thing is terrifying and amazing. I still love this. I think this is great. All right, we have a skeletal knight giving me very Eddie vibes, this particular skeletal knight here versus this one is a dragonborn skeleton. Interesting. A dragonborn of Tiamat, no less. Notice the Tiamat logo in the chest, the Tiamat symbol. This is kind of cool, actually. They're, you know what? They're both serviceable as good miniatures. I like the initiative to change it to make a dragonborn. I wasn't sure how I'd feel, but I'm liking it the more I look at it. Uh, we have the classic Get the Yankee. Uh, they did an amazing job replicating the front cover of the Fiend folio on this one. Versus the updated version of the Get the Yankee. <laughs> yes, quite literally, this is brilliant, but I like this meme. It's very much how I feel about these. For those of you who may be watching this on YouTube, we're streaming this live on Twitch. So if I'm making off comments that seem a little off to you, it's me talking to Twitch chat. All right. Now, this Glabrazu is like, he goes right back in the 80s cartoon that we're talking about. Like, he's supposed to be scary, but he just looks, he's got boob arms. Like... They didn't even do the arms out the side like every spider creature you've ever seen where there's this set of arm and then the other arm comes underneath. This dude literally has arms for nipples. Like, what is going on here? Um, Like, <laughs> it's so ridiculous. 
Um, so anyway, here's this. Let's look at the 5e one. <laughs> oh my god. Talk about a glow up, man. Like, this guy, I feel like he talks like Snagglepuss, right? Like, what's going on, Venger? I'm going to fight these adventurers. It's going to be great. And then this guy will just terrify you, rip you apart, and ruin your dreams. Um, so, yeah. Um, a lot of these, I've actually, to some degree, enjoyed the original better. <laughs> this one, it's got to be. This is a new, is, is definitely better situation. Okay, the Kirin. I think I'm going to like both of these. This one's a little more unicorn in its design. It's a little more like chunky around the middle versus the new Kirin. Like this very much just looks kind of like a unicorn, but with some metal like wing stuff and like big old hairy back. This one, like, it is still kind of a unicorn, but it it's less horse-ish in my mind. I think I actually like the original better, but I like them both. I think they're both good. Okay. Now, this green slot is just a frog. Like, like you could tell me that this is a bullywug, and I'd believe you. Um, Like... This is a bullywug. This could be any kind of frog creature. Whereas, as we know, slods are terrifying extra planar things that basically, in some of them, have essentially chest bursters. Like, they're terrifying. This is a frog guy. This is a green slod. Now, he is still frogish. He's actually more toad like here with his sort of pointy thing, and he's obviously a spellcaster. As you can see from the epic staff here. This is a frog guy. Uh, either way. This will serve as a bullywug if you need one. Okay, we have a pit fiend. Dude is yoked. Look at the, the muscles on this guy. He might have a little gut on him, but he is all muscle. Uh, and like those fangs. I don't know if you can actually eat stuff with them because I feel like they're going to get in the way. But he's awesome. Now, I'm wondering if the newer version of the Pit Fiend has the sword and the whip. Oh, no, sorry. I'm thinking that's a Baylor. Yeah, uh, this one's got the, uh, the Pit Fiend mace. But yeah, so like this is him in college. Then he grows up and has a couple kids. Right? Still strong. Got a dad strength. But, you know, he's also got a dad bod. So I get it. Listen, I'm right there with you, Pit Fiend. Um, I get it. You know, it happens to the best of us, no matter how much we try. Um, but obviously, this is also very cool. Right? Um, okay. Flail Snail. I like that the original flail snail literally just looks like a bunch of flails on pseudopods. Uh, the new one is obviously a better, like, more cohesive design. Um, I like this. This is just cooler. I think, right? Also, the fact that you can use their shells to, like, make a robe of scintillating colors or whatever. Like, <clears throat> you can see that in the iridescence of this shell. Not so much here. Very cool. Gives me Dr. Doolittle snail vibes, but with, like, um, obviously the flails that look like actual metal flails. These kind of look like, again, pointed pseudopods. I think they're cool, though. Um... I like them both. Flail snails are awesome. All right. Here we have Morden Kanan. When he was younger and hip, casting Morden Kanan's Faithful Hound. Oh, no. here he, Sorry, he wasn't casting it there. When he was young and hip and knew fire magic, and then he got old and lost all his hair, and his hair went from gray to brown, and he got a puppy. 
So, like, good for you, man. Listen, you shaved it off before you went bald. You decided to, you didn't want to be gray anymore. With white, no less. Like, I get the white. I get it, man. You decided, I'm going to show everybody that I'm actually younger than they think. You shaved it off. You dyed your, your, you know, your beard and your goatee here. You dyed it brown so people think you're younger. And you got a puppy, man. Like, listen to this guy. He's out there. He's he's doing his best. He also was like, hey, look at me. I'm magic. And he's like, now I can use a sword. Uh, unwieldy, seemingly uncomfortable, and probably not practical sword. But he's got a sword. So, like, good for him. Right? I think I, I you know... Good for you, buddy. You know, you self-care, right? Do your thing. Uh, then we <laughs> we've got Grandpa from the Monsters, <laughs> and then Dracula. Uh, this. <laughs> oh man. Oh, I don't feel like I could take this Strahd seriously. This guy, terrifying. Like, he will fuck up your day. This guy, he might give you Halloween candy. I don't know. Um, But, you know, look it, all right? So he was a big fan of the monsters in first edition. He even did the white stripes in his hair, the big over-the-top goofy fangs that stick out of his mouth when his mouth is shut. He had one E eyebrows, right? And then, you know, he said, I'm going to start taking care of myself. I also, who stands like this? I'm going to get a chair. He's going to shape those eyebrows a little bit better. He's going to slick that hair back. He's going to dye the, that white hair, right? He got some wine. He's more sophisticated now. He's got armor. He's got he's a he's a gambler, right? He's playing cards. He's got a pet raven to really drive home that raven loft thing. This is a man who has taken care of himself and has done nothing but appreciate and value. Well done, Strahd. You know, here we're maybe like we just lost Tatiana. We're like, oh, what do I do? I I don't know. I'll go through this. Blah, well, I'm going to talk like that. And it feels right to me. And then he's like, okay. I've lost Tatiana like eight times already. I know it's going to keep happening. I'm just going to have to deal with it. But that doesn't mean I can't take care of me. So he did. And I'm proud of you. Good job, Strahd. Lolth? Okay. Lolth? Always, she listen. She's a queen. She's an icon here. Look at her. She's got her jazz hands. She's showing you like, I have arrived. I am the Spider Queen. Check out this red necklace I've got. I borrowed this sweet webbed collar from my friend First Edition Strahd. He told me they're all the rage where he's from. Uh, and then she said, "You know what? I'm done perpetuating this vibe. I'm gonna be my true self." which is a terrifying giant spider woman, and I will wreck Drow's lives because of it. Um, bring me Driz Doerden. Like, she's she's out there. And this is an amazing miniature. I love it. Oh, a Sarek. Oh, buddy. What are you wearing on your head, my guy? I'm glad you changed it. A Sarak is another one, right? He doesn't even can't even afford shoes, right? Uh, you know, he's still finding himself. He's not sure who he is. Uh, he's got wraps for feet. He's got a recently broken nose that he's trying to cover up with some bandages. Um, you know, his robe is looks like it's hand me down, right? He hadn't maybe gotten to the point where he is ready to command spheres of annihilation and, and bring forth an undead god baby to summon a curse for the whole lands. Now here, look, all right, he's got shoes. He got his face done, right? You can see his face work is done. You can see the the robe, the, you know, the sort of 
bandages on his face. He got his face on. He upgraded. He said, you know what? I'm done. I do not need these hand-me-down tattered robes anymore. I'm going to get my nice form-fitted black and red robes because I deserve that for me. I've got this amulet. I can uh, you know, control spheres of annihilation. I've got this badass you know, hat that looks way better than, you know, the Emerald City on top of my head from when I was younger. I was really obsessed with Wizard of Oz, and now I've got this sort of white hat thing going on. And I have this cool skeleton staff as opposed to this weird rod thing. Everybody's just glowing up. I'm liking it. Good for them. All right, Vecna. Okay. So, we don't have an eye, we don't have a hand, we expect that, right? We got some sort of weird bald cap situation going on here. Uh, they also talked, Vecna also spoke to First Edition Strahd about the epic collar, right? They know that, the, you know, there's all the rage back in First Edition. Uh, is standing on a, on a pile of skulls and bodies, so, you know, exerting dominance there. Um, got a weird little necklace going on, but, you know, is replicating an iconic cover of a DD and d book. And then we go to, I mean, come on now. What is happening? This guy, all right? So, first of all, got his hand back and his eyeball. He said, you know what? I don't need to wear a bald cap anymore. I'm just going to be bald and proud. I'm also going to do some work on me, right? I'm going to show off these muscles. I'm going to accentuate them with this awesome gold sort of rib cagey looking armor. Plus, look at how much cooler I am with my magic now. I got a spell book. Doing, doing things up right. I like that. Good for you. All right. We got the Eidolon. Classic, iconic Eidolon, right? Front cover. I think of the Dungeon Master's Guide, you know the one where they're plucking the eyeball out. Do not love the flip-flops too, by the way. Big fan of flip-flops on this guy. Uh, wouldn't change a thing. Honestly, you don't even have to. You could just leave this like it is. But he got up. Listen, all right? He was tired of sitting down and holding this bowl. Who's he holding it for, right? He's done. This jerk came and plucked his eyeball out on the front cover of, the, of a book. They drew a picture of it. Time to put that bowl down and get up and throw hands. Uh, so good for you. All right, we have the... Now we jump to... This is another one where they went backwards. This is the 5th edition uh, Gold Dragon. Right? Uh, beautiful. Love the design. Love how they decided to pose it with the wings up, kind of giving that, and then the tail curling around the base. This is also very nice because this is only a large size miniature. So this is a way to get a lot of space of miniature, but in a smaller form factor. Very nice. Now, the first edition one is amazing, and I love it. You ready? Look at that. How cool is that design it is the ampersand logo with the fire i love it also i really like the first edition dragon a gold dragon design <coughs> although this is more traditional dragon they did keep some of the vibe of this right you can see it kind of has the the longer sort of tendrils, barbels, whatever you want to call them, the kind of mustache, which has translated to the 5th edition dragon here. I like that a lot. I love this. Uh, they are not out yet. They will be out in July 2024. Uh, they are from WizKids, right? Uh, which are the people that do all of the pre-painted miniatures for Dungeons & Dragons. So... Uh, Amazon, your friendly local game store, dndmini.com, all set to release in July. We'll look at the end of this and see if we can pre-order them now. 
Then we have the Efridi. This is obviously the iconic Efridi from the front cover of was it the Player's Handbook? Uh, and then we have the updated Efridi, uh, which is drastically different. Um, this one is obviously much more genie-like, as you can literally see it's coming out of a bottle. Um, and again, more in line with the current version. So this is all we have currently from the 50 planned miniatures we know of, as well as we talked about the, uh, the Red Dragon at the start. We'll go to dndmini.com and let's see what's available. Okay, so they are available to pre-order right now, at least from dndmini.com. Uh, yep, here's that logo we were talking about, Dungeons & Dragons 50. 10% off your first order from their website. Now they do sometimes have discounts or like exclusives that like if you spend so much money on dndmini.com, you can get something. Also, remember, there are 10 secret rare chase miniatures, which we do not have images of for this box set. So there are 10, presumably five, right? Five first edition, five fifth edition. I'm going to assume that we're probably going to look at other iconic monsters, potentially like things like the bullet, uh, the beholders, probably one of those things like that. Well, we'll get a first edition version and a fifth edition. Um, you can pre-order the stuff currently from WizKids. The I also got to say I like that the premium dragon figure is only thirty bucks. Uh, that's actually probably I don't know the size of this. Uh, I think there was a size that we talked about originally, but I think the pricing is pretty good. Uh, so I'm excited about that. So anyway, there you have it, folks. That was the. 50th anniversary miniature set for the 50th anniversary of Dungeons and Dragons from WizKids. Again, the team at WizKids was nice enough to send over all of those renders and stuff for me to take a look through. If they end up sending any of those out for me to review personally, we'll get an unboxing set up uh, and do that. So anyway, thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you next time.